What's up guys, Tom here from Web Dev Education. And in this video, we're going to be creating this loading placeholder in React, otherwise known as a skeleton. And you see this in a bunch of apps like Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., etc. So it's pretty much everywhere. And I remember reading, I can't remember the statistic, but there was some statistic that if you have these type of loading placeholders, people are more likely to stick around and wait for the content compared to a blank screen because this gives some sort of anticipation, I guess. So that's why it's kind of important to have these type of loading states and placeholders. So yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So let's get right into it then. Let's create some code. So I'm just starting off with a blank create React app. So I've just stripped out all of the contents of the app component. And let's take a quick look in the browser. And there we go, boom, blank app, Merry Christmas, exactly what we want. So actually start creating some code then for our skeleton component. So in the source directory, let's create a new folder and let's call it skeleton. And then within skeleton, we want index.js and style.css. So within index.js then, let's import React from React. And let's export const skeleton equals arrow function and return a div with a class name of skeleton wrapper. And let's just put test in here just so we can see something on the screen. And then also we need to import style.css and let's just target this skeleton wrapper class in style.css here. Let's target skeleton wrapper. Let's put a background of EEE -E -E and a height of 40 pixels. Oh, and let's just put a width of 100%. Just so we can see something on the screen. Actually, let's put a darker gray uh, of CCC. Then in app.js, let's import then that skeleton component. So import skeleton from skeleton. And then all we need to do is just render within app then Let's render that skeleton component. So let's take a look in the browser just to see what that looks like. And there we go. Boom. We've got test in there with our gray background. So we know our skeleton component is rendering correctly. So then from here, then let's just constrain the width of the screen. Let's add some top margin and let's add some styles to our skeleton component. So it actually looks like a loading placeholder. So then back in the code, Let's go to class name app. So in app.css, left foot app then, let's just put a margin of 40 pixels top and bottom, auto on the left and right. And let's just put a max width of something like 400 pixels, just so it constrains the width of all our skeleton components nicely. So there we go. So we've got it centered on the screen and we've got it a nice width. Obviously that we don't want it to span the entire width of the screen. That's gonna look gross. So in skeleton then in style or actually in index.js, let's remove that test. And within the skeleton wrapper, let's add a, another div in here and call it simply skeleton. And before we actually add any styles to this skeleton class, we want to add another div within this skeleton div. And we want to call this class name, something like skeleton indicator or something like that, because this is going to be the small, thin sort of blurred, darker gray that's gonna look like it's traveling across the screen. So again, before we target this skeleton class, let's style the skeleton indicator. So let's in style.css in skeleton, let's go skeleton indicator, and let's give it a width of five pixels and a background of something darker than the CCC. So I don't know, 666 maybe. This is gonna look really obvious. It's probably actually not gonna look very nice because of these massive contrasts between the grays. You might wanna use lighter grays, but just for the sake of this tutorial and so you can actually see it in action, I'm gonna use pretty obvious and pretty contrasting grays. Okay, so then also we want height 100% for the skeleton indicator. So then we want to target the skeleton class and give that a height of 100% as well. So then let's take a look in the browser and there we go. We can see we've got, zoom in a bit here actually, we've got our five pixel width for our indicator. And the reason I've wrapped, so let's take a look in the code again. The reason I've wrapped the skeleton indicator 
in a parent div is because this indicator, we're not going to animate this div here, the skeleton indicator. We're going to animate the skeleton. Now you may be thinking, well, why don't we just add a position relative to skeleton wrapper and then a position absolute to the skeleton indicator because then we don't even need this wrapper div here and we can animate the left property on the position ab absolute for the skeleton indicator and animate that. So just animate the left property. Well, the reason for not animating the position absolute and left, top, bottom, right, whatever for a position absolute is because the browser has to calculate the layout every time we shift an element, a HTML element, by any number of pixels or percent or whatever. So anytime we shift or want to move a HTML element, the entire document or potentially the entire document has to recalculate the layout just in case it affects any other elements within the document flow or the document structure. Now, we're not gonna be doing that we're going to be using translate. So what translate does, actually first we'll actually just code it up and then I'll explain what translate does. So first of all, this is actually really simple to do. All we need to do is target this skeleton class name. So back in style.css in skeleton, we want a transform and the translate property. And we simply want to shift it 100% of the skeleton's width, we want to shift that amount. So 100% of the skeleton's width, we want to shift it. Let's take a look in the browser for this actually. So we can see the style's already applied. So whatever its width is, we're shifting it that amount across, that amount of pixels across. So that's why you can see the indicator is now on the right hand side. So we just need to animate this then. Let's add some keyframes and let's call it left to right then we want to go from and we want the transform translate so let's just go transform translate in there so from translate zero to translate a hundred percent so then we can add in this for the skeleton class we want to animate so we want to use the animation property and we want to give it something slow just so we can see it happening so let's put two seconds and we want left to right and infinite. So it'll just repeat on a loop. So let's take a look in the browser. And there we go, we can see it's animating from left to right. So a couple of quick things here. We want the animation type to be linear. This is a sort of easing animation. So now we've got a linear animation. It's just moving from left to right at one consistent speed. Now you also may have noticed that this five pixels doesn't cut off here. If you can see the cursor on my screen, it doesn't cut off here. It actually cuts off here and we can actually see it. So we want to add an overflow hidden to the skeleton wrapper. So let's add an overflow hidden. And actually we want to probably move these keyframes up to the top just for readability. So then actually let's remove then this animation just for now, just so we can see and save it there so we can see the indicator is actually hidden because it overflows the width of the skeleton wrapper. So the indicator will be here somewhere, directly to the right hand side of the skeleton wrapper. So let's add then back in that animation. And then I'm gonna slow it down a little bit more just so it's a bit more obvious to see. But we wanna add a box shadow to the skeleton indicator. So let's add a box shadow and we don't want to offset the top or bottom or left and right. So we'll keep those two values at zero, but we want a blur and a spread of five pixels each. And we also want it to be the same color as our background. So we'll put 666 there for the box shadow. So let's take a look in the browser again, and there we go. We've got our indicator. It looks like a proper indicator now, loading from left to right. And actually I'm, I'm gonna change the 666 to a lighter color because it does actually look a lot nicer. So we're gonna have a bit of a lighter gray there. Let's put 999 for both the box shadow and the background. And actually it could be a little bit lighter again. So we're gonna go one lighter than CCC. So let's actually change the background then. I know I said I wasn't gonna change the backgrounds for this tutorial, but I'm gonna change it. So I'm gonna change this to, instead of CCC, something lighter. Let's go DDD and let's take a look. Okay, that looks a lot nicer, I think. So, so I'm not gonna mess around with it anymore, but you get the idea. 
Like you might actually want to add a bit more blur to this so it looks a bit more like the Facebook and the LinkedIn ones, etc. But this is pretty much the simple way how we can create this loading skeleton. Now, before I show you how to make a circle one, again, a circle one is, is really easy. I'm going to explain to you why we're using the transform property instead of the a position absolute and animating the left. So I already explained the position absolute part, but the reason we're using translate is because transform, translate, we're not actually shifting that particular element to a new place so it would restructure the document. This is essentially just floating over and just repainting the pixels and just floating over all the other elements that may be on the page. Compare that to position absolute and any positioning we use, it could cause a reflow in the document. Okay, so from here then, let's take a look at how we can create a circle one or a circle variation. So all we need to do is just accept a circle prop and we just wanna to check to see if circle, so if circle has been passed in as a prop to skeleton, so let's go circle question mark. So actually I've spelled that incorrectly, circle there. So circle, if circle, we want skeleton wrapper circle and let's actually target this then or style this skeleton wrapper circle in style.css. So skeleton wrapper circle, I'm gonna put a fixed width and height for, the, for this, but you can easily just pass in a width and height if you want to the skeleton and then just apply it via a style attribute to this wrapper element. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna add a fixed height of 200 pixels and a fixed width of 200 pixels. And then we also want a border radius of 50%. So then in app.js, let's actually add one of these circle skeletons then. Let's go circle in there. Let's take a look in the browser and there we go. We could probably do with also expanding or increasing the width of this indicator, but that's just simple CSS. You can easily do that yourselves. I'm pretty sure you don't wanna be watching me write trivial CSS all day. So with that said, I'm gonna end the video there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. Comment down below if you found it useful and I will see you in the next video.